Greetings and welcome to Pop Culture Beasts Halloween Horror Picks. I'm your host, Ryan Stockstead, uh, and uh, today's episode is brought to you by 31 Days of Horror. That's a Portuguese language horror movie review show with new episodes every day in October. I've been invited to guest host a couple episodes this season, so be sure to go check that out. Today we're going to talk about a criminally neglected British horror movie from 1964, which explores the uh, meeting place where the swinging 60s clashes with gothic horror. Witchcraft, 1964. Not to be confused at all with the 1988 Witchcraft, which spawned all those terrible sequels. No, this Witchcraft stars Lon Chaney Jr., Jack Headley, Jill Dixon, David Weston, Diane Clare, Marie Ney, Viola Keats, and Yvette Rees as Vanessa Whitlock, the witch. It was directed by Don Sharp, who helmed the Hammer classic The Kiss of the Vampire, as well as The Curse of the Fly and Psychomania. And it was written by Harry Spaulding. Uh, he wrote the Terrence Fisher sci-fi horror classic The Earth Dies Screaming, as well as Chosen Survivors. And um, perhaps my favorite, the Walt Disney horror movie The Watcher in the Woods. Where did you get that? This? We found it pinned to a window curtain in Forrester's office. It's a witch's charm. A devil doll. The movie opens on a busy, bustling 1960s city street, uh, but then quickly pans over to show an old forgotten graveyard, which immediately establishes the film's major theme. This is a movie about the conflict between tradition and progress, old and new. But on a more specific level, it's about the feud between two uh, old families, the progressive lanyards and the Whitlocks, who still practice the old religion, witchcraft. Well, it's supposed to be one of the four great Sabbaths of the year when the witches gather. Candlemas, Rudemus, Beltane in Midsummer, and Halloween, the night the witches make their sacrifice to the devil. Well, I can hardly wait for Friday. The patriarch of the Whitlock family is Morgan Whitlock, played by Lon Chaney Jr., and he commands a strict devotion from the rest of his family. Part of this film's conflict is derived by the generation gap, whereby the younger generation is less concerned with the traditions of the older generation. But even Morgan's young niece, Amy, played by Diane Clare, appears strangely devoted to her uncle. I must obey him. Horror fans will recognize Diane Clare from one of cinema's most celebrated ghost stories, The Haunting. Now the Whitlocks are furious with the Lanyards because back in the 1600s, the Lanyards accused the Whitlocks of witchcraft and they actually killed poor witchy Vanessa Whitlock by burying her alive. Now the Lanyards are building a modern uh, housing development over the old Whitlock Cemetery. The Whitlocks have used that cemetery for 800 years. What right does an upstart like you have to run sewers through their coffins, put buildings over their graves? Anybody who's seen Poltergeist knows you don't build a house over burial ground. And it doesn't take long before Vanessa Whitlock returns from the grave to exact her revenge. Now the head of the Lanyard family is played by British character actor Jack Headley. Giallo fans may remember him from his leading role in Fulci's sleaziest movie, The New York Ripper. 
but James Bond fans know him from For Your Eyes Only, in which he plays Carol Bouquet's father, who gets machine gunned to death on the boat. There's a terrifying sequence in Witchcraft where the aging matriarch of the Lanyard family uh, climbs her way out of her wheelchair and tries to descend this perilous staircase, only to find herself face to face with the witch. Along with House of Black Death and Spider Baby, which we talked about last season, uh, this was one of Lon Chaney Jr.'s final proper acting roles, assuming you excuse his many television cameos throughout the 60s. Uh, his uh, heavy uh, smoking and drinking had already caught up with him. He'd later lose his voice, and he eventually died of heart failure in 1973. Vanessa will be angry. Vanessa? Yes. She is coming to us. You will see her tonight yourself. At the Sabbath. When Witchcraft was released in the United States, it was the headline feature of a double billing that included horror comedy, The Horror of It All. And if you look at the movie's poster, you'll see they also incorporated a promotional gimmick. When you bought your ticket, the usher would also hand you a witch deflector, which was actually a green or pink plastic badge the size of a 50 cent piece. Viewers were instructed to grip the witch deflector tightly when you feel the powers of the evil upon you. Witchcraft is one of a few non-hammer British horror movies from this era that I really love. It would make a fantastic double feature with either Night of the Eagle or City of the Dead. Now the version that I picked up is the Midnight Movies double feature DVD in which it's paired with Devils of Darkness. This is currently the only way you can get the movie on DVD. It's not available on Blu-ray, but you might be able to find it streaming somewhere. We're doing a special audience choice episode this season. We put together a huge list of horror movies. Go check it out, then pick any and all that you'd like to see us review, and we'll cover the highest voted movie in the penultimate episode of season two. Thanks for watching Pop Culture Beast's Halloween Horror Picks. I'm your host, Ryan Stockstead. Uh, be sure to like the Halloween Horror Picks Facebook page and subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on the Pop Culture Beast YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Watch horror movies. See you next time.